Hey, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com. There's a new tractor company in North America that sprang up from the need to supply tractors to Cuba. And now they're looking at the North American market and possibly the global market. The tractor they manufacture is called an Ogun. The company is called Clever LLC, and their co-founder is a guy named Horace Clemens. I had a chance to talk to him at a meeting recently in my area. And Horace, we're standing in front of a, a new American-built tractor that is your concept. And I want you to tell your story uh, for people that have not heard of what's going on. Uh, tell us the background, tell us your company, tell us what you're doing. Well, I worked for IBM for 18 years and I met a young gentleman that left Cuba when he was 16, Saul Berenthal. That's the essence of the name, Clemens and Berenthal, C-L-E-B-E-R, Clever. And he had always said that he wanted to go back to Cuba and start a business. So. We sold our business in 97. He started going to Cuba in 2007 when they let humanitarian trips go over. He's Jewish, and they have a Jewish community, but don't have a rabbi, so he's been taking rabbis over since 2007. So on December the 17th of 2014, when the two presidents shook hands, he called me and said, let's go do a business. And I said, what do you want to do? And he said, software, that's what we're good at. I said, well, send me what you got. I'll look at it. I looked at it for two or three days and called him back and said, we did retail software. They got one store, it's the government store. They got one bank, it's a government bank, and they got the internet only in a couple of cities. It's not the time to do software. So he said, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? And I said, let me read. So it was June before I called him back and said, we're going to do tractors. And he said, are you crazy? I said, no, we're going to do tractors. He says, why do that? I said, well, the data you sent me, they just gave land back to 300,000 farmers roughly 60 acre tracks, and they got 60,000 tractors and they're all over 30 years old and most of them are great big Russian tractors. They're farming with manual labor and oxen. They import 80% of their food. We're gonna build them a tractor. So between June and September, we put together a prototype. I found a bunch of good rednecks to build race cars and said, hey guys, I need you to build me a tractor. So they put us a prototype together we painted it red and took it to Cuba at the International Trade Show. But the key thing that we did was a difference in business model. We knew the Cubans wouldn't necessarily trust us. So when we designed the tractor, we said we're going to have only global suppliers, and we're going to have two supplier, global suppliers for every part on the tractor. And we're going to give the Cubans the design, and therefore they only have to do business with us because they want to, not because they have to. If we don't do a good job, they can manufacture the tractor themselves. So that's the proposal we gave them. They loved it, but the embargo got in the way. So President Obama did some things so that some business could be conducted, but until the embargo is lifted by Congress, nobody will really do meaningful business with Cuba. But at that trade show, we found that we had built a global product, that the lessons the Cuba taught us applied all over the world. We came back, we made the news. I got a call from an agricultural trade guy, and he wanted to interview me, and in the interview he said, well, why aren't you selling this in America? I said, there's not a market for it. And all he did was just start laughing. I said, what's so funny? He said, well, you just don't know what you're talking about. He said, there's a market for that tractor in America, and he explained to me what the market was, that you have a growing niche of farmers that are going fresh to local and organic, and so we said, okay, he's right. So we've just finished a seven-day, seven-state, 19-day trip hitting farmers from Alabama to Minnesota, and the reception has been phenomenal. And you're really, this is not a row crop tractor, and, and this is not really probably a hobby farmer tractor. It's for someone that's doing kind of specialty, uh, the back to the country movement yeah. type of deal. Where do you see the application specifically? What, what, what's your demographic in this country? Well, the demographic in this country is some of what you said. And I recently returned from Seattle, and Portland, where you have an awful lot of organic growers out there. And, and so that's one of the market is the, the organic stuff is catching on. And so you've got more and more of those guys that are moving from two acres to 10 to 20. And so as they, as they move up, they need something like this tractor. So, I mean, as a copy of the Alice Chalmers G, it was built for close in cultivating and, and really for vegetable type crops. It, uh, it doesn't have a loader on it. It does have power takeoff. It does have a three-point. Tell us, tell us about the components, where it's built, pricing, and everything. Well, 
The tractor's built in Fife, Alabama. That's in the very northeast corner, about 60 miles south of Chattanooga. We had a diesel engine until January the 1st of this year. Tier 4 eliminated all of the air-cooled diesel engine options. So as we put the system together, we said, look, we're going to build a tractor that can be fixed in the field or the shop with nothing but a crescent wrench and a pair of pliers to pull pins. And, and so out of that, we said that's why we wanted to go air-cooled instead of liquid cool you get too much more complexity with you go you, you know you got fan belts you got radiators you got all these things that are going to break and the air cooled engines are make the maintenance and everything so much simpler so we for international we still have a diesel option but the, the, the diesel option in the states doesn't really make a whole lot of financial sense uh, because the Honda engine weighs 86 pounds and the diesel engine the lowest cost diesel engine that we could find increases the price of the tractor by three thousand dollars above and diesel fuel in in the states costs more than gas so diesel in the states makes no sense unless you make your own biodiesel the tractor in the u.s is twelve thousand five hundred dollars a good part of what we're trying to do we've talked to all our vendors and they all say that when we get our volume up to two thousand a year they'll give us some fairly substantial price reductions we're not going to stick that money in our pocket. We're going to take that reduction and pass it back down in, in a price reduction to the, to the farmers. One thing that is really unique about what you're doing, you're not out looking for dealers. Everything we did in making a tractor, we said we'd have to look at the vertical models that exist today and say, how do we eliminate all the cost? How do we build a system that says you don't touch the tractor unless you add value? We have the highest function, lowest price tractor. We're going to go to land grant universities and bid on every bid they get for their research farms. And we believe that within two years we will have a tra one of our tractors or one similar to ours that somebody else tries to compete with us on in a research farm education program. And that's what will sell tractors. All of that keeps the price to the farmer lower and lower. So we don't have salesmen, we don't have distributors, we don't do a bulk of advertising. We do a little bit of advertising, but we're not going to do very much. We're going to depend on word of mouth from farmers that buy our tractor and see the functionality in the universities to help us. Uh, one thing I, I hear uh, being in the equipment business from time to time, um, if I could find a new 8N, something without all the electronic stuff on it, something that's reliable, I'd sure buy it. And a lot of those eight ends and Alice G's are getting old, sort of worn out, parts obsolete. Do you see this tractor having a place in that market? I believe that's the primary market that we will go after because most of the small farmers, but even the new starting farmers, that's what they have to go do. But if you find a, an Alice G that's in good shape, you're going to pay three to five thousand dollars for it. And when it breaks, you're going to spend two weeks trying to find the parts. And so that's why we believe this will will be of a great benefit to them because all the parts, any part on here, they can find within 50 miles of their field. You talked before we started the recording about um, international and, and Cuba is, uh, you educated me about Cuba. We think we have open doors with Cuba in there and they're really not there yet. It's going to take some more work to get there. But what about other countries and where do you see, and, and where, where do you see the big markets being for this product? Well, I believe the developing countries will be the big market. So I believe Africa and Central and South America will, will be the big markets, especially with what we've done. So we've gone to all those countries and said, we're not going to sell you a tractor. We're going to set you up to manufacture a tractor. So the, the proposition that we've offered is, here's the plans. You tell me what you can make the first year so I don't have to send it to you, and that over across five years we expect you to be completely manufacturing the tractor and we won't be making any money. Now people say well how are you going to make any money if you do that? And I say well if you establish a trusted relationship with somebody you can then easily get from them what else do they need and you can go build that. So when we designed this tractor we designed it off what I call a universal power platform. So that tractor separates in the middle. So what have I got? I've got all the I've got the, the motor, I've got the hydraulic systems, so I can easily turn that into a skidster. I can easily turn it into a gator knockoff. And oh by the way, what does that do to my parts? 
All of a sudden now I'm building more equipment using a lot of common parts, my parts prices go down. So the price of every product goes down. So our goal is to establish an architecture that says, we're not gonna drive the price of the product up every year, we're gonna drive the price of the product down every year. If you look at where we are today, with all the multinational corporations, greater than 80% of the world cannot afford to buy the products they built. Hey, I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd share this video with other tractor enthusiasts and subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page. And hey, if you got questions or comments, put them below. I'll try to answer them. Hey, thanks for watching.